Well, we continue to look at faith and works in Romans chapter 4. I remind you that this letter is actually about something very different from what most people think uh, in the religious world. In the religious world, this letter is typically considered uh, a treatment of whether we are saved by faith alone or whether obedience is required. And that is a huge mistake. This letter is not about that at all. This letter is asking whether we have to keep the law of Moses and be Jewish or whether salvation is in Christ Jesus and in a different religion. That is the point. So, we started in chapter 1 showing how that the nations all went their separate ways and went into idolatry and a whole bunch of other things happened at the times. Um, and that was condemned because God had shown them um, himself and his power through the things that were made. They should have known he existed. They should have sought him out there without excuse. And that's still true today. On the other hand, in chapter 2, we find that, well, the Jews uh, at the time were also not right if they were not being faithful to God, but rather just keeping their traditions, their heritage, their culture, going through the motions. In chapter 3, we discussed the fact that all are trapped under sin, both Jew and Gentile. And we all of us need a solution. The, the Jew uh, has a law of Moses that is good and right in and of itself, but it cannot forgive sins. That's where you come to chapter 4 of Romans. Well, what advantage is there? What is to be gained? And that's where we talk about Abraham in Romans chapter 4. What shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? Right, because we're trying to establish what nation is the nation of God? I mean, the bottom line, if you will, or the argument of the chapter is, is basically like this. First, Abraham is a father of many nations. That was the promise. How then are the nations like their father Abraham? Are they like him by being circumcised, like he became circumcised? Or are they like him by believing in God like he believed in God. That's what this is saying. There's a good way to know whether we are to be like him in circumcision or whether we are to be like him in faith. That way in Romans 4 is, let's find out at what point did God consider Abraham to be just? To be righteous. When did he get the nod, the approval of God? That's what this is about in Romans 4. What should we say was gained by Abraham according to the flesh? Verse 1 says, that is our forefather, those, those of us who are descended from him. Well, verse 2, if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. All right. So let's ask about these verses. Because already this is getting thick. It's getting to be where um, you kind of, you see it the way the denominations teach it. And in part, the translation is not very helpful. But leaving that aside, think about this again 
what is he talking about? <laughs> it's verse 9. Is this blessing then only for the circumcised, or is it also for the uncircumcised? We say faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? That's Romans 4, 9 and Romans 4, 10. Now, the reason for this is, again, we're asking about circumcision there in 9 and 10, while we are also asking about our forefather according to the flesh, Abraham, verse 1. This passage does not have anything to do with whether or not we obey God in the flesh. That's an assumption. Of course you obey God in the flesh. The question is, do you need to be Jewish to be right with God? It's clear from verse 1 and verse 9 as the envelope structure that what happens in between here is not about um, obedience in general. It's about obedience to the law of Moses. Verse 2 is very plain, as well as 3. If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Oh, in verse 14. Uh, see, what people are doing is saying, well, works is obedience. Doing what God said, keeping his commandments. Well, that's not, that's not true. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about works of the law, the law of Moses. If he was justified by the works of the law, then he has something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and that was counted to him as righteousness. So it's not because of the works of the law that he was counted righteous. He was counted righteous when he believed God. When did he believe God? But verses four and five become very confusing if you think this is about obedience. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. It sounds like he's saying, if you have to obey God, and that's how you are saved, then you're owed salvation by obedience. And the one who doesn't work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly refers to the fact that we are saved by faith alone, not by works. You are ungodly, but God justifies you anyway because you have faith, not because you have obedience. That's what the Baptists do with this. But that's absolutely wrong. That doesn't have anything to do with what this passage is saying. It is saying, <laughs> when was Abraham justified? When was he counted right? What does the scripture say? He believed God. When did he believe God? So if somebody is doing the works of the law, then when he is rewarded for keeping the law, that is his due. That's not a gift. That's, a, that's an agreement that he has made, an agreement he has kept. But to the one who doesn't do the law, but believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Meaning, Abraham wasn't obeying the law of Moses when God called him righteous. That's all he's saying. If you keep the law of Moses, that's good. And, you know, you get your due for keeping the law of Moses. But you don't get righteousness. The righteous shall live by faith. Romans 1 said, remember? You don't get righteousness from the law, you get it from the faith. Belief in God. <clears throat> Which is what David is talking about. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Verse 7. True. You're forgiven of lawless deeds, not by means of the law. If you fail to keep the law of Moses... You know, you're not appealing to the law of Moses to get forgiveness. <coughs> you can't. You didn't keep that law, so that law cannot save you. That's what he's saying. 
Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Is that blessing, verse 9, for the circumcised only or also for the uncircumcised? We say faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. He's trying to stick it to a specific point in time. Was it to a circumcised Abraham? Was it when Abraham was circumcised that he was counted righteous? Or was it at some other time? And when was that? How was it counted to him, verse 10, before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, it was before he was circumcised, verse 10. He received, verse 11, the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness he already had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe despite not being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well, and to make him the father of the circumcised, who are not merely circumcised, but also who walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before being circumcised. So Abraham is justified by faith before and without circumcision, which makes him the father of those who are not circumcised, as well as the father of the circumcised who aren't just circumcised, but who walk in that same faith. What we mean by that is the faith of Abraham is the rule. Believing in God, that is how a person is being saved. The works of the law, they're useful and they're good in and of themselves, but that's not the salvation. And those who are under the law are only being saved when they are walking by faith. And it's the same kind of faith that Abraham had. And it's the same kind of faith that you and I are supposed to have. Everybody who is being saved is being saved in the same way. Well, the reference is to Genesis 15, and I do want us to look at it. In Genesis 15, one, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord, what will you give me? For I continue childless. The heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And he appealed again. Behold, you've given me no offspring. A member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir. Your very own son will be your heir. And he brought Abram outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to them, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. So, when he had no heir and he complained, if you will, when he spoke to God about this, God said to him, not so, your own son will be your heir. And he took him outside and showed him the stars. God considered Abraham to be righteous, which is just. He's right. He's just. That's real justice. Considered Abraham just when Abraham believed that he would have offspring his own offspring, and that they would be as numerous as the stars. When he accepted what God said to him about this, even though it, he had not seen it and there was no indication, there was no earthly reason to believe this, well, God considered him righteous because he believed God. And you know this because he acted in accordance with it. This is the place where he is called righteous. And we now have to, um, well, maybe not. Let's do it this way. So we go back into Romans 4, which is, we were somewhere around verse 13, for example. 
This is why he's saying what he's saying. At Romans 4.13, the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law of Moses, but through the righteousness of faith. That's Genesis 15 that he's talking about, specifically verse 6. The promise that he would be heir of the world didn't come through the law of Moses. It came through the righteousness of faith. This is the point. If, the, if it's the adherents of the law of Moses who are to be the heirs, well, then what was the purpose of his believing God and that being counted righteousness? Faith is null and the promise is void. If it's the law of Moses that has you know, the, the, the promises, if that's the real end-all be-all, then the faith that came before by which he was called righteous doesn't have a purpose. If, the adher if it's the adherents of the law of Moses who are to be the heirs, faith is no promise is void. The law of Moses brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all Abram's offspring, not just to the adherent of the law of Moses, but also to anyone who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence things that do not exist. So, again, the promise did not come through the law. It came through the righteousness of faith. That's how it was promised. So then, if we come later and say, well, but this, the law of Moses has superseded that somehow, and this is the end all beyond, yeah, you need to be Jewish to be saved. Well, what happened to the promise? What happened to the faith? Why was he counted righteous before and apart from without the law of Moses? If you have to have the law of Moses to be right, how could he have been right? That's what Romans 4 is saying. And that's where verse 16 comes in is very important. I think it is probably the most important verse in this chapter for understanding that very clearly the faith, the word faith here in Romans is talking about obedience to Christ Jesus. And the word law is talking about obedience to Moses. This is about the Jews and the Gentiles. Because Abraham is the father of many nations, not just Israel. And all the nations of the earth are blessed through him. Everybody who has the same faith that he had. Not everybody who has the same faith flesh that he had. That's the verse 16. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not just to the adherent of the law of Moses. It's everybody. but also the one who shares the faith of Abraham, the father of us all, which is written later, I have made you the father of many nations. Which is Genesis chapter 17. There's a couple of verses there and I do want you to look at them. When he says, I have made you the father of many nations, it's Genesis 17. Verses 4 and 5 say, Behold, the Lord tells him, My covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be Abram, but it will be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. That's Genesis 17. And even if you are not good at math, you probably know 17 comes after 15. 
Genesis 15 is where he was declared righteous because he believed God. Genesis 17 is where we find he is the father. As God said, I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. The decision is made. This is going forward now. But then in Genesis 17, we'll do a little bit more math because that was verse 5. But if you move forward to verse 10, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male shall be circumcised. In the 26th verse, the conclusion is that very day, Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised. So Abraham first is blessed called righteous because he believes in God in Genesis 15. Then in Genesis 17, God says, I have made you the father of many nations. And finally, in the end of 17, he establishes a covenant of circumcision. So if we go back into Romans 4, We take another look with a full perspective of what came before. Remember how it started. What shall we say was gained by Abraham? If he was justified by works, he has something to boast about. But what does it say? It says Abraham believed God and it was counted him as righteousness. Well, verse 9 brings this to the point. Is the blessing only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We say with that faith was counted Abraham as righteousness. How was it counted to him? Before or after circumcision? Not after, before. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness he already had by faith while still uncircumcised. Right. He was righteous in Genesis 15. Before and apart from and without circumcision, he was already righteous. Then he becomes the father of a multitude of nations. Also before, apart from, without circumcision. That's the point of Romans 4. This makes him the father of everybody who believes, whether they're circumcised or not. He's the father of those who believe, though they are not circumcised. And he is the father, that's 11 and verse 12 of Romans 4. He is also the father of those who are circumcised, but not just circumcised. Those who are circumcised who also walk according to the faith of Abraham. So everybody who is being considered a child of God, everybody who is being saved, is being saved in the same way by the faith that Abraham had, not by the subsequent agreement of circumcision and the law of Moses, all the other things that came with that. Those things are good in and of themselves, and Romans will deal with that next. But he's right. He is the father of everyone who believes, circumcised or not. Because the 13th verse makes plain the promise to him and his offspring that he'd be heir of the world didn't come through the law of Moses. It came through the righteousness of faith. It didn't come from Genesis 17. It came from Genesis 15. That's what he's saying. That is where the righteousness comes from.
and in the end you got again verse 416 we'll have to talk about reckoning at the next opportunity which we will there's a lot in here actually but the 16th verse it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring it can't just be to those that are circumcised that's a subset of all of his offspring to whom the promise had been made he was promised to be the father of many nations but there's one nation israel that has the circumcision that cannot be the goal the end it depends on the faith the promise rests on god's grace and is guaranteed to all the offspring not just the subset of offspring who are circumcised and looking forward to romans chapter 9 in conclusion here for today romans 9 verses 6 7 and 8 he tells us not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring but through Isaac shall your offspring be named this means it's not the children of the flesh who are the children of God but the children of the promise are counted as offspring and that counted there in Romans 9 8 is the same word as <coughs> Abraham believed God and God counted it to him righteousness in the same way that he is counted righteous because of faith not because of works of the law of Moses we also are counted his offspring because of our faith that is like his faith so Romans is making this argument and again that's chapter 9 we're only on 4 the whole thing is about this the the assertion that it's about whether we are saved by faith alone or by works that's just false that's a uh, as they call it in debate that's a false dichotomy <laughs> um, no it's not about that at all the question is do you have to be Jewish and if not what's the purpose of the law of Moses and was it good well yes it has a purpose and it is a good thing and there's a lot more to say in Romans but we're out of time we need to look at chapter 4 again uh, at the next opportunity with this word for counted because this is a word that means reckoning or figuring um, and it is the central focus actually of chapter 4 whether you realize it or not well we'll talk about that at the next opportunity but you know if if we made a chart of all the verses where this word occurs there's a few here and there and there's like 20 times that it occurs in this chapter alone <laughs> it's clearly the focus of the chapter is how is righteousness reckoned meaning how does god when does god consider us right how does he for consider us to be right and it is when you have the kind of faith that Abraham has. Which is evidenced by works. James 2 makes very plain. Abraham was justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son. It's very plain. You are justified. You have the faith that Abraham has when you obey Jesus in baptism for forgiveness of sins. That's how you are proven to be righteous. That's when God calls you right. And it's not because you have a do or you, you've done something that puts God in your debt or gratitude or service. You were dunked underwater and came back up. That doesn't accomplish anything in the flesh. It, you could barely mount an argument in 1 Peter 3 that it's like a bath <laughs> and even Peter says not the removal of filth from the flesh the appeal to God for a clean conscience that's where the work is because that's where the faith is 
And so it's not a work in the sense of you putting God in, into your debt or accomplishing some great feat. No, but it is obedience because you can't say you believe in God without obeying him. First John, the whole letter, James chapter 2, many other places. So if you today believe in, in God and you believe in Christ, his son, whom he has sent, then the way that you show that or the way that we know if you will, and that God knows that you really believe that is you obey him in baptism for forgiveness of sins. You repent of the former way of life and you are baptized in his name and raised a new creation in Christ, a Christian, a child of God. They're the ones who have the faith that Abraham had. They're the ones who are being saved in every nation, circumcised or not, descended from him literally in, in genealogy or not, immaterial but if you have the same faith that he had you have the same righteousness that he had if today you have not obeyed the gospel you need to do so before time runs out in life if today as a christian you haven't lived right let us pray for you that you can be restored please either way let your spiritual need be known now by coming to the front while we stand sing the song selected <laughs>